Dear friends, <clears throat> ladies and gentlemen, today I stand with you to help shed light on a subject that demands our unwavering attention and collective action, the 1988 massacre of Iranian political prisoners. This dark chapter in history, now 35 years ago, serves as a stark reminder of the grave consequences of silence and the rise of authoritarianism in our world. <clears throat> in the summer of 1988, Iran witnessed one of the most tragic and brutal events in its history. Tens of thousands of political prisoners were forcibly disappeared and extrajudicially executed in a matter of weeks. Victims of a merciless government cracked down on dissidents. The massacres took place based on a fatwa by Supreme Leader Ayatollah Khomeini and what has been determined by experts to amount to crimes against humanity and even genocide. The victims were buried in secret mass graves while the perpetrators continue to enjoy impunity and some have even taken up top leadership positions including Iran's current president, Ibrahim Raisi. These prisoners were individuals who dared to raise their voices against oppression, who sought nothing more than the realization of basic human rights and fundamental freedoms. Their lives were tragically and senselessly cut short, leaving families shattered and communities scarred. We are fortunate that some of those who were incarcerated at the time of the 1988 massacres survived and are living witnesses to these heinous crimes. Having sought refuge in Albania, they must therefore be protected at all costs as they are critical to any future investigation or inquiry about the massacres. But while we wait for justice to prevail, it is more than disheartening to have to bear witness to history so predictably repeating itself. The protests that raged throughout Iran last year and the ensuing and ongoing tens of thousands of imprisonments and executions at the hands of the current regime are a direct continuation and result of failing to punish the 1988 massacres. What is even more disheartening is the role of the international community in this unfolding tragedy, among many others. While some nations voice their concerns, many choose silence, turning a blind eye to atrocities being committed. And by doing so, they become complicit in the horrors that unfold, betraying the very principles that they espouse to uphold, freedom, justice, and human rights. The lack of decisive action allows impunity to thrive, emboldening authoritarian regimes and undermining the very fabric of international law and justice. Now, we know that the rise of authoritarian, authoritarianism is not limited to Iran. Around the world, we see a concerning trend of leaders eroding de democratic values, <clears throat> silencing dissent, and crushing opposition. This trend poses a severe threat to the progress we have made towards a more just and equitable world. When impunity is allowed to flourish, it sets a very dangerous precedent for other regimes, making them believe that they can act without consequence. I come from a part of the world which is no stranger to such calamity. Armenia, bordering Iran, is sandwiched between Turkey and Azerbaijan, which have long held genocidal ambitions towards my people. As we speak, 120,000 ethnic Armenians are being held hostage and driven to starvation by Azerbaijan in Nagorno-Karabakh. In what has also been determined by experts to amount to crimes against humanity and even genocide. Similar crimes are ongoing elsewhere around the world, including against the Rohingya people by Myanmar's brutal ruling junta and the Uyghur people by totalitarian China. And why? Because statements of condemnation, while of course better than nothing, are simply not enough. What is needed is decisive action because when the international community says but does nothing in the face of atrocities, 
despots think that they have no reason to co stop committing them. And following in his predecessor, Ayatollah Khomeini's footsteps, Ali Khamenei sends more and more prisoners to their deaths every day. He does so because he fears their will and power to rise up. He does so because he knows that they're in the right and that he is in the wrong. Friends, ladies and gentlemen, these are dark times so dark that they could drive even the most optimistic mad with despair. With the rise of authoritarianism has come a commensurate rise in cynicism, jadedness, and complacency in people, which has put the very basic value and faith in human rights under attack. I have lost count the number of times that I've been asked in the last few years why human rights even matter anymore when realpolitik screams otherwise. All I can answer is, where would we be if we gave up on the human rights project? How can we imagine living in a world without them? Which is why it's so important that we never lose hope. Hope is the torch that guides us through the darkest of times. We must never give in to the despair that impunity seeks to instill in us. Instead, we must maintain our optimism, knowing that history has shown us that justice will eventually prevail. As a human rights lawyer who has spent most of her career advancing the prosecution of international crimes, I've seen it with my very own eyes the trials and convictions of those most responsible for crimes committed during the Rwandan genocide, the former Yugoslavia, and the Khmer Rouge in Cambodia, decades after their commission. In fact, the crimes of the Khmer Rouge were committed before I was born, and yet I helped pen the final judgment against the former head of state, Q. Sampan, confirming his life sentence. The same fate awaits the perpetrators of the 1988 massacres in Iran. There are people who haven't, even been, who haven't even been born yet who will join our fight. And so as we gather here today, I ask that we reaffirm our commitment to fighting for justice and accountability. We do so because we recognize the power that we possess as individuals and communities to demand change and stand up against injustice. The courage of those who have spoken out against impunity in Iran and elsewhere inspires us to do the same. Our collective voice is a force that cannot be silenced. To combat impunity in Iran and other oppressive regimes, we need the continued support and involvement of the international community. Silence and inaction are not neutral. They perpetuate the suffering of countless victims and embolden oppressors. I therefore join the call on governments and institutions to take a stand, to hold perpetrators accountable for their actions, and to demand justice for the victims. But my appeal today is not just limited to the world's leaders, governments, or institutions. It includes the masses. It is directed to every global citizen, and especially anyone in Iran who might feel like they're losing hope or that it's time to give up. Remember who you are. Never forget that your leaders serve you and not the other way around. And every single time that your leaders forget that, remind them. You don't need to be eminent or any, need to have any money or a fancy title or a PhD to harness the power within and become an agent of change. No matter how hard or brutal the task or process, it is the duty of each and every individual with conscious, rational thought to participate in correcting the errors of those who think that they can get away with committing heinous crimes to keep themselves in power. And it's for this that we must commemorate the victims of the 1988 massacres, as well as all those who have suffered or perished in fighting for freedom. We must not do so with a heavy heart, but with the deepest gratitude and the utmost admiration. 
These heroes deserve not just to be mourned, but also to be revered and serve as an inspiration to us all to rise against the tide of authoritarianism, advocate for justice, and maintain hope for a world where human rights are fully respected everywhere, where freedom and justice reign, and where impunity has no place. So today, and every day from here onwards, I stand with you, I walk with you, I put one step in front of the other alongside you, helping to carry you as you would carry me. <laughs> As you would carry me in our communal fight against tyranny, injustice, and impunity all the way to the end, and with abundant faith, I look forward to celebrating with you all when Iran, not if Iran, but when Iran will finally be free. Thank you. Thank you.